Hello, my name is Mark Hashemi and um, I used to work as a, as a credit manager uh, for 10 years, a senior credit manager um, for, for EDF Energy, um, responsible for banking 3.2 billion. Um, so I understand some of the pressures that working in this role entails. Um, in fact, according to Deloitte, um, managing mental health uh, costs businesses in the financial sector um, more than any other businesses or any other business sector as a result of this high pressure, high stress environment we find ourselves in. Um, I now work as a psychotherapist and um, director of an organization called Strategic Wellbeing. So we work with um, businesses and organizations of all different shapes and sizes, um, predominantly looking at um, policies and processes to ensure that they're geared up to supporting um, stress management, mental health and well-being. Um, <clears throat> managers are competent to proactively spot the signs of struggle, struggle, poor mental health, stress in themselves and, and their staff, and staff are confident to actually speak about this subject. Um, why did I change role uh, from, from credit manager to, to a mental health practitioner, psychotherapist? Uh, well, the reason being um, I, I experienced burnout myself uh, several times, um, perfectionist burnout. Um, I've also um, I've also experienced depression uh, and, and mental health problems in the broader sense have certainly been around for, for myself and my, and my family for as long as I can remember. Um, <clears throat> so um, never has it been more important time for us to be or for you, should I say, to be uh, managing credit in a crisis. Um, but let's not forget about managing ourselves in this crisis as well. Um, with many of us now uh, finding ourselves home working. Um, the external environment around us has changed, not just uh, physically, but also emotionally. And, and many, of, many of us know that um, managing our own mental health and well-being and, and that of our teams uh, is important. Um, many of us know that logically, but now we find ourselves in this unique environment. Uh, many of us are now starting to feel that for the first time. So I'm going to run you through uh, very quickly today um, a, a taster session um, just on homeworking and the impact of mental health, recognising the signs in myself and others, developing balance whilst homeworking, talking about well-being with my credit team and, and what support is available. So I'm going to talk to you first of all about the impact of COVID-19 on businesses, and this is going to be no surprise uh, to you. This is this is a re reinforcing what you already uh, already know. Uh, so we know that um, out there. Uh, businesses are now struggling or lots of businesses are struggling uh, and they're either struggling to the point where they're becoming uh, insolvent and shutting down uh, or they are struggling uh, and as a as a result uh, maybe falling into that debtor category or they're thriving um, so for many businesses out there um, many businesses are thriving and looking at this as an opportunity to to diversify what they're offering um, well this is no different uh, than your credit team right and what usually happens when we're so busy focused on um, uh, the, the, the external workload we can forget about ourselves internally and our credit team now there was a report that came out in, in 2017 called the thriving at work assessment report that was put together by mind um, and um and the former chair of hboss they combined forces and um worked with deloitte to create this report and, the, and in this report they, um, it was identified that in the workplace when it comes to your mental health and well-being we as human beings fall into one of three categories we're either uh, ill at work so we're shutting down right same as businesses we're either ill at work in this sense and about to be signed off so we're experiencing stress we might be anxious or depressed uh, or we're struggling at work so there's a decline in our work labor might be unproductive um, or we might be starting to express some of the signs of stress irritability lack of concentration whatever it might be for us or we're thriving at work so we're feeling balanced keyword here that i'm going to come back to today and we're in a supportive environment um, it, it, trusting relationships around us we feel we can talk about our well-being uh, if we decide to and we might be feeling um we might be feeling vulnerable um in the positive sense so um one of the key findings from that aforementioned report is that 
um, mental health problems exist in all three of these categories. Right. So just because you're just because you're experiencing um, uh, or, or just be, just because you're experiencing some of the symptoms or some of the signs of anxiety and depression uh, or you might have received a previous diagnosis doesn't mean that you're going to be in shutting down or struggling. We can, with the right support in place, thrive in the workplace with the most complex mental health diagnosis. People can thrive with the right support in place. Usually where our heads go to when we hear the words mental health is we think about problems, we think about struggling because why? Because we, we only look at this subject uh, reactively. We only look at it when, when when, um, when it becomes a problem. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the impact of, of, of home working and mental health. The key takeaway here is not just to be focusing on the impact of COVID-19 on our businesses, but also on ourselves and our credit team as well. So um, how does COVID-19 uh, and home working impact mental health and stress levels? Well, leaveism is on the rise. Um, uh, leaveism is a newly coined term uh, and it's about employees working outside their normal hours. This is, this is where flexible working hours um, has, has, has kind of had a detrimental impact where employees um, aren't switching off. So it's always on. There's been a rise in this always on culture. We're taking annual leave to work. And this results in, in blurred lines between personal and professional lives, especially whilst we're working from home in this environment. And it's difficult for us to uh, differentiate e easily about what is home time and what is work time. So you might, you might experience yourself or your team sending emails at silly o'clock very early in the morning, very late at night. This, this can appear um, or lead to an appeared absence of control. So without those clear boundaries in place about when do I switch on and when do I switch off and when is home time and when is work time and when is family time, et cetera, et cetera, um, we, we feel like we're always on and we're never getting to the end of that to-do list. That, 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 that never getting to the end of those those uh, those debtors in this sense that results in stress increasing right and so when our stress levels increase that leads to low levels of mood and we can feel lonely as a result of that and we know that loneliness can be a a, a, a symptom of, of covid19 lockdown as well and loneliness elevates stress hormones um, so when we so when we feel lonely it decreases the release of the happy chemical uh, dopamine um, and can make us feel more stressed. Uh, our human hungers are impacted. Our human hungers are our basic human needs. It's a psycho psychology term from transactional analysis, human hungers. And one of our basic human needs is the needs for close relationships and, 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 and physical touch. And for some of us in isolation on our own, we're deprived by that now. Well, well we can start to fill some of these gaps um, with some of these well-being activities I'm going to talk to you about th through the course of this, of this short talk. Uh, and our stress levels can continuously increase as a result of our, our human needs being uh, impacted. And what happens is we can go around this cycle until we develop stress, um, burnout, anxiety, depression, sign off. So, and, and end up being signed off from work from sick. Now this is incredibly common even prior to the home working situation we find ourselves in. Um, the UK was already down as one of the most loneliest places to live in Europe before the current uh, crisis began. And loneliness is associated with suicidal ideation and attempts um, and um, uh, one in four of us in any given year, one in four of us in any given year are diagnosed with a mental health condition with many more of us undiagnosed. So this is incredibly common um, stress, mental health problems. But we just don't talk about it until until we can see it and we can only see it when it impacts behavior. So I'm inviting you to take a proactive approach to this now, because what's happened as a result of us home, or most of us home working is that uh, we're even more um, deprived by uh, some of uh, by by some of our senses, by sight, by seeing our employees on a day to day basis like we might have done previously in the office. So it's really important that we think about new ways of working uh, with ourselves as a team, remembering that your credit team is your biggest asset. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to talk to you about stress now. So what is stress? Stress is defined, um, there's many definitions, but one of the definitions that resonates with me is the health and safety executive's definition, which is <clears throat> stress is defined as the adverse reaction people have to excessive pressure or other types of demands placed on them. Uh, so stress and pressure are two sides of the same coin. But what's the difference? Well, the stress curve beautifully illustrates the difference. On the left axis, you've got level of performance from low to high. You can think of this in terms of energy as well, from low to high. Uh, and on the bottom axis, you've got the level of stress from left to right, pressure to stress, left to right, pressure to stress. And there's four quadrants here. Quadrant number one, um, if you're here in quadrant number one, if you find yourself here, you're likely to be feeling bored, inactive and unmotivated. Uh, this is where there is not enough pressure placed upon you to, uh, to perform at your highest level or to feel energized enough to perform at your highest level. I like to think of it as a, <clears throat> in terms of a speedometer where there's petrol in the tank but there's no destination to drive to. So what's the point in putting your foot on the accelerator? We need a purpose, a reason, and a deadline to get up and get out of bed in the morning. So we need some pressure to feel motivated. Quadrant number two is the optimum pressure, um, positive stress zone here. Um, this is where we're feeling pressured, but we're feeling positive. So we're able to, um, so we have a purpose, a reason, a deadline, and we're feeling motivated as a result to put our foot on the accelerator and go. Uh, now, th this is where we find ourselves uh, in, in the stretch zone as well, um, right at the top of the bell curve. It's important to note that uh, it's healthy for us to move around this uh, bell curve, this stress curve on the screen here. Otherwise, if we're going to keep our foot on the accelerator, we're only going to go one way and that's heading towards burnout. So it's healthy for us to stop and take a break from time to time. Um, if the pressure or the stress is continuously increased, well, then we enter the stress zone here. Or it's, things, start, things start to um, manage manifest in stress now so we start to feel pressured but negative um, we, 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 we could be going at a, a speed that's too that's too fast for us we're unable to concentrate um, there are excessive demands um, placed on us um, there's an absence of control around our workload we don't feel supported at work uh, we don't understand really what we're doing we're not able to concentrate and stress can manifest in very very different ways depending on who we are we're all very unique individuals and we all have uh, our own individual response to stress <clears throat> um, so what can happen here is the performance starts to dip we're unable to concentrate we can get irritable um, stress releases uh, cortisol or stress hormone that can play havoc on your on your physical body as well uh, and as a result of that you might start to get headaches stomach aches sleep problems are incredibly common with stress as well and if stress is continuously increased we can enter this zone here this is where we're experiencing complete burnout where we're, we're unable that there's an absence of energy here <clears throat> we're feeling highly stressed going back to the uh, the, the, um, the the analogy or the metaphor of the um, of the speedometer, there's no more petrol in the tank here. We put our foot on the pedal for too long and we've not taken a break and we've run out of fuel. Um, so really important that we're aware of where we are uh, on, this, on this stress curve. Um, asking ourselves on a daily basis, where am I on? Where where am I today on the stress curve, uh, and what can I do to bring myself back over to the more positive green zone? Because we can all do something to to change the way we think and act about stress, and we can all do we can all start to take control of our own stress levels by bringing this into our awareness. Awareness is always the first step to change. A lot of the time, this is out of our awareness. <laughs> So what can happen if we end up? Uh, another way of looking at um, another way of looking at stress um, is looking at the exhaustion funnel. And what can happen here? It, um, th this can this can give us some signs as to uh, how easily we can end up um, uh, moving over that uh, over that bell curve um, uh, by not um, properly balancing our our life and our work and then as I talked about earlier incredibly important for us to be focused on the, on these what can be potentially blurred lines whilst home working between uh, work life and, and home life um, so in the exhaustion funnel when we're at the top of this funnel in the blue area we're said to be balancing appropriately work chores rest and play and play in this sense is anything that energizes you 
so a hobby or an activity that, that, that gives you energy and when we're at the top of this uh, exhaustion funnel we're not exhausted we're feeling happy and balanced and well right we're feeling good uh, and the key word here is balanced and then what happens is um, our uh, our age debt starts to increase so we think I'm just going to work another couple of hours this week you know what I'm working from home so I've saved some time from travel I've saved at least two hours from travel I'm going to work a little bit longer uh, and so we just work and we just about do our chores and we get some rest but we go to bed feeling frazzled you know when you take work to bed um, <laughs> metaphorically and and our boundaries start to slip or we start to develop sleep problems um which is a very very common stress st uh, uh, stress sign um and we start to become unproductive right? our energy levels start to dip because we've deprioritized keyword we've deprioritized play play being what energizes us uh, and then what happens is we become um deluded um, to the thought that if we just work a little bit longer we'll get to the bottom of our our, our debtors or we get to the bottom of our to-do list or our email trail and, and it's a it's a very seductive feeling that I just work a bit longer but but again it's it's um, it's delusional isn't it because I don't know about you but uh, but I can't remember ever getting to the bottom of my email trail or to-do list it's kind of never-ending in the world we live in right now right but anyway we get caught up in this spiral and so we deprioritize our chores the washing up builds up we're not resting at all we're working in our pants and then uh, we become irritable and joylessness and then we're just focusing on nothing but work um, with a lack of boundaries in place and we end up exhausted we're now experiencing stress and burnout burnout can be a real absence of energy altogether and it's a breeding ground for developing mental health problems Stress isn't a diagnosable mental health problem, common misconception. It's a normal human reaction to a normal, uh, to, to, a, to a stressful uh, uh, situation um, or event, but it can, it can lead to developing mental health problems. The most common mental health problems you might develop are anxiety, depression. Um, <clears throat> so remembering here, this is about focusing on what you can control because we can all do something to change the way we uh, think, act and behave about stress in this sense. Um, and so this is about focusing on what you can control. Now, having been down the spiral myself before, um, I'm inviting you to take a proactive approach to this because what happens, um, uh, what I've observed happens to many people, including myself that have, have experienced burnout, is you learn a lesson. You get to the bottom and then you decide, you know what, I'm going to put some boundaries in place around my life. I'm going to make some changes because um, I don't want to experience this again. Um, <clears throat> and so what I'm inviting you to do is to take proactive control here. So you don't have to go, you don't have to experience burnout to be uh, boundary and balanced in this sense. So the first thing to do, I, I invite you to take away, is to think about um, one, what do I deprioritize? What is it here that I deprioritize? What is my healthy activity? What is my play? What is it that energizes me that I deprioritize? And be mindful of that. Yeah? Once you've got that, there are then three rules for you to do. And rule number one yeah, is to set yourself a well being appointment with yourself uh, every day. It doesn't have to be long. Right. We're very good at making up excuses to not be able to do things because we don't like change as human beings. It doesn't have to be long. It can be short, but it's important. So rule number one, set yourself that well-being appointment with yourself. Put it in your diary. Rule number two, make it the most important appointment of the day. Yeah. And rule number three, for goodness sake, show up for it or you've got nobody else to blame here. Remember, focus on what you can control it's never been more important to be boundaried uh, around work life and balance than it has than it is right now whilst we find ourselves working from home in a different frame of work how can we do this um, i'm going to introduce you to just at very very high level to uh to a, a framework that we've created here at strategic well-being uh, that that helps us to 
uh, remain balanced whilst homeworking. Uh, and it is the balanced framework. Finding balance whilst homeworking helps us to build resilience in unusual times. So what is balance? So first of all, it's about being boundaried. And I've talked about that much already in the previous slides. So being boundaried has never ever been more important than it is whilst homeworking. Having clear boundaries is about self-discipline. Having clear limits and structuring around your day, protecting you from burnout and exhaustion. Active. Exercise releases dopamine, the happy chemical um, that, that, that we are deprived from when we feel lonely, um, which in turn immediately shifts our mental state and we feel good. So we need to find new innovative ways of, of keeping active whilst homeworking. Learning. Learning improves our confidence and confidence improves well-being. Now is the time to rediscover old interests or try something new out. One of the five ways to well-being this is for anybody who knows that model. Appreciation. Uh, we live in a society which teaches us to focus on what we don't have, not what we do have. Appreciation um, is shifting your mental focus to create new healthy ways of thinking. Notice is about stopping and just noticing uh, how, you how you're feeling, where you're feeling it. It's about quieting the mind chatter to give your mind and body a well-earned break, practicing things like mindfulness, meditation, or just practice making friends with yourself what we found ourselves in at the moment is an environment where as the external noise quietens down our internal noise increases so it's about making friends with yourself during these times c is connect one of the most important ones on here connect is about ensuring that we remain in relationship with each other during this period of isolation it's about being close whilst being distant we need relationships to thrive and survive in life so we need to think of new innovative ways of uh, of connecting with each other uh, immediately Immediately during this period uh, and lastly environment this is both focusing on your immediate working environment um, and where possible ensuring that it's separate from your living environment um, uh, and um, and thinking about the external environment we live in as a collective as well so that's a, that's a an overview of the balance framework as this is just a, a, a taster session today i'm just going, i'm going to just do a, a, a dive into a couple of these areas um, that i think are really important for for us all to consider so as, as i mentioned earlier boundary has never been more important than it is whilst home working having clear uh, boundaries is about self-discipline clear limits and structuring around your day protecting you from burnout and exhaustion having clear um Boundaries can be the difference from um, experiencing professional fulfillment in your role uh, and experiencing um, depression, burnout, mental health problems. Uh, having clear boundaries um, protects you from being used. It, it, it provides an ethical um, frame in which you can work on a day to day basis. Um, <clears throat> so. One of my uh, recommendations here, following what I previously said about setting up your well-being appointment with yourself, is to um, is to do some reflection uh, as to as to how how much time you want to spend uh, during different activities during your week. Um, you don't have to do it for the weekend if you don't want to. You can just do it for. Do it, do it for the weekday but extend your weekdays so that they include all of the waking hours in your day <clears throat> um, and then what i would invite you to do is write down a list of um, uh, six to nine things that energize you that you get your energy from um, and incorporate these into your working diary so the first thing is about planning, 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 then executing. Avoid overlap where possible. So if you get a, 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 if you get, um, a desire to do the online shopping in the middle of the day, um, ensure you've got time for, the, for that to be planned in your diary somewhere. This is about sticking to your working boundary limits. Uh, the health and safety executive rec um, regulations suggest a five to ten minute screen break for, or change of activity every hour. So that's also important to note for our well-being. Um, what I always recommend is wear different clothes to work. Um, if possible, after work, 
change, go home, I walk out the front door and come back in. It's ritualistic. I get, I get changed. I feel like I'm uh, different clothes, different energy. I don't feel like I'm still working and I'm not tempted to pick up that phone that's so close to me and so tempting to do. Uh, use your diary, phone alerts, reminders, print out your schedule and and don't beat yourself up if you if 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 at first your uh, self-discipline isn't completely up to scratch it's about reflecting and reinforcing daily building this up now you'll see on mine i've got a, an 8 to 8 a.m um breath work appointment um with myself this is my important appointment of the day i've, I've got half an hour for it but realistically it only takes 15 minutes now uh, um would you rather turn up to your breath work appointment or or, or cancel it and turn up to, and, and reschedule a, a, a client an important client meeting well for me i'd rather turn up to my breath work appointment because did you know that just 15 minutes of breath work a day what i mean by breath work is just deep breathing oxygen it oxygenates your bloodstream so we shallow breathe a lot of the time but by 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 um by 15 minutes of deep breathing every day just 15 minutes we reoxygenate our bloodstream what it does is it turns your bloodstream from being acidic to 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 alkaline and um and it eats any toxins in your bloodstream as well uh, it can reduce stress levels immediately they say it can they they say that oxygenating your bloodstream science says can uh can eat seven or can can um can get rid of 70% of toxins in one breathwork session. Um, it, it can close you down for um, receiving uh, external pathogens, something that we really want to be mindful of in the current environment we're in. So would I rather do 15 minutes of breathwork to keep myself healthy or deprioritize that to set up another client meeting? I think I know what the answer is there. It doesn't have to be long and extensive. These are small steps, but they're regular. And in order to, in order to make this habitual, in order to develop a habit, we need to do something small every day over and over again until it feels like autopilot. And that can take that can take a, a few weeks for, for that to take place. But the more we do it, the more it becomes automatic and the less we have to even think about it. It's automatic. It's autopilot. It's habitual. So I would really invite you to think about how can you incorporate your well-being appointments uh, into your diary. Appreciation. We live in a society which teaches us to focus on what we don't have, not what we do have. And appreciation is shifting your mental focus to create new healthy ways of thinking. So this is this is very much about uh, about about uh, gratitude um, <clears throat> and um, focusing on what we can be grateful for. Um, shifting our mindset. For, we, we live in a world where we're geared up to focus on what we don't have, not what we do have. So. Uh, this appreciation is about practicing gratitude um, and thinking about, you know, what can I be grateful for right now? Um, it might be, might, and one of the one of the quickest ways to shift our mindset from from feeling uh, negative, uh, anxious, and worried to positive, well, secure, and safe is to practice gratitude. And gratitude can be as simple as as picking up a picking up a, a journal and spending two minutes, five minutes, writing down all the things that you can be grateful for that day, all the things that you've, you've, you've seen, smelt, tasted, uh, your family, your friends, the people that you've spoken to, the roof over your head, the job that you've got, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't have to take time. You can do this whilst you're lying in bed um, trying to get to sleep and it can help. It can actually improve your, your sleep. Studies have shown, shown that practicing gratitude before bed as well can improve your sleep, especially if you struggle with, with um, uh, stress related um, lack of sleep connect it's never been more important for us to connect with our staff in new uh, um, new and innovative ways to take stock of our team's mental health and well-being it's, it's, this has always been important but it's ne but it's never been as important as it is now that we are deprived um, by physical proximity by, but by being able to see our staff uh, as, as, as we as we would do on a daily basis if we were working in the office with them so we really need to think about new ways of working and we need to roll these new ways of working out immediately uh, across our credit teams. So what do I mean by that? So how this is about how can we be close whilst we're distant? So we need to contract with staff, agreeing new ways of working. Um, so explaining that we're going to be doing things slightly differently 
Uh, and one of those ways is that we're going to get well-being on every agenda. And what I mean by that is having a well-being check-in. I'm going to run you through a very simple example of a well-being check-in on the next slide um, um, in a moment's time. But I would also, uh, when I say every agenda, what I mean is one-to-ones, any team meetings. I would, I would also propose that from a from a team manager's perspective, uh, managers make it man. It's mandatory for managers to be having a space at the beginning of a team meeting um, for employees to check in with how they're feeling. Um, a lot of this, this isn't about providing solutions for our employees. Uh, this is just about providing a space so that we can all uh, share how we're feeling. Pairing staff with a colleague or buddy for peer-to-peer -peer check ins as well. Um, you know, this doesn't all fall down on, on, on uh, credit managers to be um, spotting the signs of, 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 of poor mental well being or stress in their teams. You know, we're all responsible for our own well being, our own stress levels, and that of our peers. We're all one team, right? All of us. And mental health itself, um, it, uh, we're all vulnerable and susceptible. It doesn't care about hierarchy, right? So in that sense, um, we can all do something to change, to change the culture around mental health and well-being in our credit teams. We need to move past "I'm fine." Yeah. So just say, okay, well, I'm going to get well-being on every agenda and say, "How are you?" Well, we're going to get a response saying, "I'm fine," because it's automatic. It's autopilot. It's what we do. We say, "Hello, hello, how are you?" I'm fine. We don't mean it. We don't mean it when we ask it. We don't mean it when we receive it. We don't believe it when we receive it. There's been some some re, uh, the Mental Health Foundation did some research about this with. Um, uh, 2,000 British adults and um, identified that we're asked how are you and respond I'm fine up to 14 times a week but 19% of respondents said that they didn't mean it and 60% said that when they heard it they didn't believe it so we're not we don't use this uh, we, it's a well it's an autopilot uh, check-in it's not a well-being check-in it's not we don't use it to, to 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 really check into somebody's mental health so we need to think about ways to get past this one of the one of the easiest ways is is um is temperature checking it can be difficult to to respond to that question is actually you know what i'm not fine so we need to provide our staff with a new ways of working uh in this sense so um <clears throat> from a from a credit management perspective um you'll be familiar with what's your dso uh, what's your day sales outstanding uh, over and over and over again that was something that we would talk about when i was working in in credit on a daily basis um checking in as to as to what level our dso was well what i'm proposing now is that on your agendas in your virtual team meetings that you have uh, to include what's your DSL. What do I mean by DSL? Well, DSL is what's your daily stress level. And it can be as simple as um, answering it on a scale of one to 10, with, um, with one being I'm, I'm, I'm feeling um, blissful and 10 being I'm feeling um, stressed to the max. So where are you on a scale of one to 10? Because what you'll find is you say, hello, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, where are you on a scale of one to 10 then? What's your DSL? Oh, my DSL today is actually about a seven. Okay, well, let's talk about it then. So I'm inviting you to get the DSL, your daily stress level on every single agenda. So, Question for you is what what happens when something goes wrong at work? Well, when I ask this question um, to to uh, to any sectors really, um, but but focusing on on credit, you know, if something goes wrong at work, what do we try and do? Well, we we we, we put something in place to fix it quick time, right? Because there can be huge financial implications. So what do we do? We try and fix anything that goes wrong straight away. Um, well, when it comes to um, mental health and well-being, again, we can um, we can we can avoid the situation altogether because we think I don't know how to fix this. You know, I don't know if I want to ask what's your DSL because what if somebody says, "Well, my DSL's a 10 and then what am I going to do? What am I going to say to that person? Well, um, it, it's not your job to fix, right? So when it comes to mental health and well-being, our job is to listen, and listening isn't about fixing. So what, what do we need to be mindful of? So there's there's a few a few uh, rules that I would propose. The golden rules of active listening. 
So rule number one is don't try and fix. I mean, we're not here to fix when it comes to uh, uh, mental health problems. We're not here to fix symptoms. That's not our job to fix symptoms. Uh, we're here to listen. Um, the, the, in, in psychology, uh, in, in, in transactional analysis, psychotherapy, psychology, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a game, unhealthy pattern of behaviour, should, should I say that you can get caught up in with someone called why don't you yes but where somebody might be struggling you'll be like oh well, why don't you go to the doctors yeah but you know i don't want to go to the doctors well why don't you go to to to, to see an acupuncturist yeah but you know i'm scared of needles why don't you yes but why don't you yes but and that, and that that um if you find yourself caught up in why don't you yes but it's because you're trying to fix that person doesn't want to be fixed they just want to be heard paraphrase so if someone says i'm really struggling so okay so in your own words um paraphrase back so what you're saying is over the last week you've started to feel a little bit worse um and you're feeling a little bit distant from the team is that right so it's just paraphrasing back in your words what you think you've heard the other person say uh, it shows the other person that you're you're listening and if you get it wrong at least they will correct you so you can understand them verbal nods mm -hmm, aha uh -huh, yeah gestures um remember that when it comes to um lots of there's lots of various different studies around this but um one of the studies that sticks that sticks out for me uh, is that um uh, only seven percent of 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 communication accounts for the words that are said the rest of it is uh, our body language and our tone of voice so be mindful of your verbal nods mm -hmm, uh -huh, your tone of voice how fast or how slow you're speaking whether you're sounding critical or nurturing uh, open questions so this isn't about asking yes or no questions this is these are inquiry questions to just to get to know a bit more so this is a okay can you tell me a bit more about that What's that like? How long have you felt like that? Is there anything that might help? If you felt like this before, has there been anything that's helped? What can I do to help you? Is there anything I can do to help you? What can you do to help yourself? These sorts of open two-way questions that are supportive. They're not offering advice and solutions. They're empowering the other person to think about what helps them. And lastly, allow for silence silence can be very very powerful but we can avoid it because it can feel uncomfortable um, it, silence can be very very powerful because it's allowing the person to express themselves that that pain that vulnerability that stress they might be feeling so remembering the key takeaway here is that we're not here to fix our role as credit uh, credit managers or or um peer-to-peer -peer, um <clears throat> is that we're here to listen support and signpost what do i mean by signpost signpost is recognizing when your job ends and someone else's begins and some of the signs around that might be if you're really trying to fix someone's symptoms then you're you 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 you're you're probably overstepping the realms of your boundaries and responsibilities and signposting is is making somebody aware of any internal support that might be available for them in the organization or outside the organization so i would encourage you to make yourself aware of what support the organization uh, has on offer and you'll be able to find that out by um, accessing or liaising with your uh, hr or, or people team representative uh, to find out there's lots of organizations have employee assistant programs so telephone counseling online counseling occupational health services you might have private medical insurance that also um, uh, gives you some benefits around um, uh, mental health stress and well-being support so worth checking out um, i'm going to talk to you a little bit about some external support that's available for you uh, if uh, you liked this taster session and you felt that uh, your team might benefit from more of this sort of stuff uh, then check out uh, strategicwellbeing.com or ping us an email at info at strategicwellbeing.com for a full list of the kinds of one-to-one -one support and and, and um, training support services that we offer if you want to find yourself let, let's imagine you want to look for some support outside the organization uh, so for some talking therapies counseling psychotherapy uh, i would i would always recommend you go uh, you don't google um <clears throat> counseling in devon uh, because you'll find a load of counselors but but they don't they're not necessarily accredited uh, and um and qualified 
so anyone can advertise themselves after short courses so i always recommend looking at the counseling hyphen directory uh, .org .uk, uh, and you'll find a list of, of, uh, of practitioners that are qualified accredited and experienced uh, offering um, face to face uh, and online and telephone counseling and support so you can actually filter there's a filter for, for online and telephone on the website and you can choose your therapist appropriate, uh, effectively. Um, Mind.org.uk, uh, um, they offer a, a wealth of, of, of support in this area. Um, one of the areas that I access mostly on their website is they have an A to Z of award-winning publications around mental health and well-being. So if you click on their website, mind.org.uk, and click on information and support, you'll find an A to Z of award-winning publications um, with lots, lots more support around specific uh, um, mental health um, problems, but also the positive side of mental health as well, stress management, well-being, except mindfulness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Google, if you were to Google NHS self-refer, you can self-refer yourself to lots of different, um, depending on where you live actually, uh, but you can self-refer yourself to, to different um, services that the NHS offer. So I know that in, in the London area, um, you can self-refer yourself to, uh, to cognitive behavioural therapy, short-term cognitive behavioural therapy, uh, without having to go and see your GP. Um, the NHS Mood Zone is also a place to, to check out as well. If you wipe that into Google, there's also some publications there um, that are great around educating yourself around mental health and wellbeing. Um, orca.co.uk, right? There's 327 different health and health apps, some of which are mental health apps that are available and, and um, arguably, um, how can we be sure about which ones of those are safe and effective given that there are so many well orca.co.uk is a great website to check out as it ranks the apps in terms of their effectiveness um, so a full list of the digital health apps available ranked in terms of effectiveness and they've got apps there some of you might be familiar with calm headspace sleep here there are apps there for time management for for, for managing your sleep better for mindfulness uh, a whole range of different mental health and well-being apps available via those links. So in summary, what we've done in, in, in record timing today is we've looked at the homework and the impact of mental health, to recognising the signs in myself and others by, by, by looking at that stress curve and talking about stress more with each other, developing balance whilst homeworking. I've given you a very high level taster of that framework. How do we talk about uh, well-being with my credit team? Well, we need to agree new ways of, of, of working, get, get mental health and well-being on, on every agenda and start asking what's your, what's your DSL as well as what's your DSO. And I've, looked, I've talked to you again at a very high level about what support is available uh, on the screen now you'll find my contact details um, mark at strategicwellbeing.com if anybody has anything that they would like to ask me uh, following um, the viewing of this of this short webinar then please feel free to drop me an email too and i'll be more than happy to help other than that i wish you all the best and hope you stay happy uh, healthy and balanced during this time and above all keep talking to each other about this subject. <laughs>